headed to a peninsula called Coil, about halfway between where I live and the east edge of the Olympic Mountains. Launched out of Misery Point today. Now, you may be wondering why I'm on the kayak. While I was editing, I was also monitoring my whale watching app, and I noticed that a pod of transient orcas were headed down south through Hood Canal. Threw the kayak in the back of the truck and made my way over here as quick as I could. I'm hoping that if I'm out here for a couple hours, they'll finish feeding and maybe head north up through the canal. I'll be able to get a good look at them. And I'll be able to snag a couple photos of them. You may have remembered this guy from the last vlog, but this is a lion's mane jellyfish. I don't know a ton about him yet. Only learned about him maybe four or five weeks ago. I've been seeing them in the water like once a week and they are getting noticeably bigger each time I see them. So I ended up asking a, a former park ranger in the San Juan Islands and he told me that they are born in March and they grow to their full size within one year. So that means as the largest jellyfish in the world with a life expectancy of one year, they can develop tentacles that are longer than blue whales. There's a little family of seals in front of me. Looks like a mama and some pups. I'm gonna see if I can get my camera out and take a photo. They're just checking me out. You can't see it right now. One of the seals just popped up behind me. Sometimes they do that. One or more of them will kind of go out as a scout and they'll head out behind you so you can't see them. They'll get up real close and silently come up above the water to check you out. It's really cool, clever. I'm only in like four or five feet of water right now. Here I'm looking at a sargassum crab. I've never seen one in person, just in the guidebooks. So this was kind of cool to actually see him poking around. We don't have a ton of sargassum in Seabeck Bay. Um, so being out here on coil, just a slightly different in underwater environment. Now on the way, I got to see lots of cool animals, not just the jellyfish, although I spotted three of them, which is exciting for me, still very novel. I got to see a lot of harbor seals, which always get me excited. And then the, uh, the harbor porpoises came through at one point. They're about six feet long and eat all sorts of fish. Now, sure, they're not the 30-foot big killer whales that I was hoping to see, but I still love seeing them. Now, it was a great day out on the water, but I had to get back home to finish editing before taking off for the weekend. headed down to Oregon to second shoot a wedding with a buddy and it was absolutely gorgeous. The weather was looking like rain but turned out to be beautiful. It's hard to keep this one steady. The night before the wedding they rented out part of the restaurant and had a family dinner. I'm not just standing still, we'll be walking. Around. Okay. Uh, we, we posed them for some shots and then had dinner of our own. Delicious. I love Mexican food. The burrito I got was okay, but the salsa? Some of the best salsa I've ever had. Definitely want to go back. This is, I don't know what it was, but it was so good. And then we met up with them for a sunset shoot later that night as well.
This is the next morning. We showed up early to check out the venue. And then as soon as the bride and groom were ready, we shot their first look out on the green. They had rented out most of this golf course for the wedding. Found a spot to stash some gear at the venue, and then geared up to do some establishing shots. Setting up the stationary angle for the wedding, we didn't have time to have stand-ins, and so it took a little bit of finagling, moving around. The cloud was dipping behind the sun, but in the end, that's why you, you hire a second shooter to stand on your tripod cams. Lighting's unpredictable when you're shooting outdoor events, and when something inevitably goes wrong, you have someone there to take care of your camera. I find it very helpful to have a second shooter when I'm working and I enjoy second shooting for others. It is never being too old to hold hands. And then of course I grabbed audio. He's running an F6 through the, the DJ soundboard. Disconnected from the ceremony table and then reconnected to a speaker over by the reception. I have my own way of running audio that works for me, but when I'm second shooting for someone else, I'm not gonna force my system on them. In the end, they're editing this footage. They're gonna process the audio. So whatever recorder they want me to use, however they want me to plug it in, if they have a preference, I'm gonna do it their way. Here I'm running around the venue during the cocktail hour. Jonathan had a list of shots to get of happy people enjoying their time, so I ran around and snagged them. As the light is uh, fading over the horizon, um, Jonathan asked me to go and get a couple more wide shots of the tent, the whole venue. So that's what I'm doing. Out on the greens, getting some backlit shots. Sun is going down, checked in with Jonathan, and he asked that I get some more shots of the property where the, the bride and groom actually got ready um, so that he can have it in that nice sunset golden hour lighting. So that's what I was doing. And then uh, j he just happened to come by on the golf court right as I finished up, and I snagged a ride with him back to the venue sure. for reception. We're almost done. Good? Good. Yeah.
Here, Jonathan's just switching camera bodies. Uh, I'm not using my kit today. I'm actually using one of his A7S III. So throughout the day, instead of switching lenses, most often we just switched bodies back and forth. And that worked for me. I I'm pretty familiar with the A7S III. It was no problem using that camera today. Now this is some uh, low quality GoPro footage. I just wanted to capture what the inside of the, the place looked like. This is where the guys actually got ready. Super nice venue. Uh, and the locker rooms. When he first told me that the guys were getting ready in locker rooms, I wasn't excited. He made it sound like the lighting was gonna be just atrocious, but it turned out to be not so bad. Um, in the end, I think the footage looked great. So. Um, I'm excited to see what he does with the film. I haven't seen the finished product yet, but looking forward to it. What are you doing here? think of a better way to wrap up a wedding day than a plate of tacos. Okay, it's just uh, the third day of the trip, third morning. Today is a travel day, so John and I are going to load up in the car, maybe grab breakfast, and then should be like a three and a half hour drive up towards Portland, where my car's at, and then another, you know, three hour drive up towards Seattle. So, Time to get on the road. So I'm headed back up to Washington and I got a text from a buddy about a bonfire. So as soon as I got home, cleaned up and made my way over there. Oh, yeah, you could. Yeah, that, that would be a problem. Like right behind me, getting back at the same time. I'm like, how do we get back at the same time, bro? 